Hi, this is Pastor Adrian Shales at BN Health, and I'm here with Chris Brown. Hey, Chris. Hi, Adrian. And Pastor this, Adrian. this is the husband of Angel, and we have the link here to watch Angel's testimony. It is a fabulous testimony of complete healing of postpartum psychosis, which is a diagnosis way beyond postpartum depression. It's a very, very difficult and rare um, ailment that comes on some women who have recently had children. She had severe tinnitus, which is ringing in the ears. She had partial paralysis of her digestive system and complete insomnia for 150 days. And God removed all mm. of this from y'all's lives and going through the For My Life retreat. So I just wanted y'all to have an opportunity to meet the man <laughs> behind Angel that that made those smoothies for her for months when she could not take any solid food for over four months, who who walked with her, who prayed with her, who who brought the word to her and helped walk her through this healing journey. So Chris, I want you to share uh, you know, it sounds like this was just totally out of the blue. It wasn't like y'all were even wondering if this would be a difficult pregnancy. You know, what was it like to see this happen to Angel? I mean, what was going on in your head as this began? Yeah, well, it was it was a big mixed bag because um, we we're very excited. We had our first child, and it was a boy, and he was amazing, and um, the delivery was it had its challenges but it was really went really pretty smoothly and um and i think you know an angel was we really prepared she worked hard to you know be able to really nurture this child um after he was born and then um all of a sudden the pressure to be able to nurse and breastfeed was building and he was sleepy and would fall asleep at the breast and we had nurses telling us he's got to eat he's got to eat wake him up and just a slow kind of level of anxiety was mm -hmm. building and we had family there to help but there was also you know tension and around different things and just meeting the expectations of um, guests and visitors and I could see you know we were both frazzled and you know I could see like this kind of anxiety level just of n the inability kind of to meet this round-the-clock nursing mm -hmm. schedule we would nurse and we would supplement him and then we'd have to clean all the stuff and by the time we cleaned it it was time to nurse again and literally it was um, it was crazy making mm -hmm. so it was and it was very difficult to see I mean we were just we were we were we had been married five years, and um, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. It was our first child, and so um, it was hard to know what we were, what we were stepping into. But s slowly, you know, she was just actually it wasn't very slow. It was at one point, she lost her appetite, um, and it was just something that triggered this an inability to eat, and mm -hmm. just she wasn't hungry. She was just consumed and kind of it, it was beginning it was it was alarming to me um, and then the sleep started to slip away and then torment started mm -hmm. to slip in and, and I just uh, I was kind of in over my head I mm -hmm. wasn't really sure what was going on mm -hmm. um, I knew we would get through it somehow um, but um, that was really kind of the beginning mm -hmm. well I think all of us who are parents especially the first time around, we can identify with around the clock everything. Yeah. But then you started having things way beyond that. Yeah. You know? So it was like it wasn't stopping for you. It wasn't getting any better. It was getting worse. Yeah, that's right. And so when you came to the For My Life retreat, with, with having a sick wife, I know you were hoping and had faith that she would get better. But what did you get out of the For My Life retreat as you... I know you were a caregiver to your son during those two mm -hmm. weeks, but mm -hmm. I know your ears and heart were open. What what were some things that that encouraged you and helped you along the way? Well, th there were a lot of things, and um, when we came, I was able to as her caregiver. I mean, she really needed um, 
to be with someone all the time. She couldn't be by herself. And we had kind of gone from things are really bad to things are worse than I'd ever experienced or, you know, like heard about. Um, and Weren't so, you um, kind of second thinking, you know, maybe you shouldn't come down to Georgia, like you've already invested oh, yeah, a lot of money. Oh ab yeah, absolutely. You're like, I don't know if we should. And was there a moment that you're like, uh, we really need to go? Um, yes, there was. And we, <laughs> well, so we really knew that what we were up against was a spiritual battle. We just knew that it was just because of, because of who I knew her to be. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we knew there could be a chemistry aspect of thing, a hormonal aspect, and we had, she had done a lot of research. We had shared in some of the information. We, we kind of knew what, we were, what women are up against mm -hmm. um, and the challenges that they face physiologically after having a baby. But um, we, I, uh, so we just, we knew it was a spiritual battle and we had gone to all of our spiritual mentors. We had gone to my home church, which at that time was, it would have previously been Pennsylvania, where my parents live, and we had gone to our own church in, um, in Massachusetts. We had sought counsel of um, faith healers from, healers from all across the world to pray for us, and, and they came back to us and said, the, uh, the greatest spiritual leaders came back to us and said, this is just mental illness. Um, you need to see a doctor. And we had seen doctors and we had gone down that route too and nothing helped. So here we were, we had heard about being health and we had picked up a more excellent way. Um, and it just resonated with us some of the things that we read. Um, it, it was just that, um, that there was a more excellent way and there might be a spiritual root to some of the stuff that was going on. That just really hit home with us. And when we came, I had Judah, um, and we just kind of fit right in to the sanctuary, to, the, to this community, and people just kind of came around us. We were able to sit, listen to the teaching. There was no fussing about us having a baby. Everyone was thrilled to see that we had a baby. Um, he was embraced and by everyone. It was like we kind of stepped into um, an extended family, if you will. And I grew up in the church, and so the teaching wasn't foreign to me, but I was hearing some things, and I was seeing scripture in a way that I hadn't seen before. Mm -hmm. So with um, what Angel said in the other interview that you'll see the link to is within that week, she was able to start eating solid foods. Mm -hmm. The tinnitus, which is the constant ringing in the ears, completely diminished. Um, the mental torment and the, the strong anxiety just abated from her, it mm -hmm. left her, and um, y'all had hope again. We did. You already had hope, but you had like tangible hope. You, it seems like you really felt like you knew God could win this one with you. Yeah. And um, as you went home, uh, she began getting her sleep back, but it took a while for her body to regulate. Um, I want you to tell our friends out here about your trips to the coffee shop, how you would <laughs> help, um, you know, lead your wife and help your wife in her really um, fortifying herself in the Word of God. Yeah, so I think um, what was so crucial about my, my time here um, was um, stepping into kind of my new role as husband. Um, you know, in the first five years of our marriage, I had a lot to learn about self-sacrifice and a lot to learn about, um, you know, not being a single 33-year-old guy anymore, able to do whatever I wanted to, whenever I wanted to, with no one to answer to. But there was a lot more to being a husband that I hadn't learned and a lot more to being a covering for my wife, which mm -hmm. I think I was familiar with that term. Um, with that concept, but um, it it wasn't something that I really knew how to do. And being health and the time that we spent here um, introduced um, some new tools, some new a new standard for me to step up to, and that I was, um, in a sense, um, 
as much responsible for her spiritual well-being um, as as she is, and um, and so so when we left here, we we had turned a corner. God had definitely done a work in in our lives, and the torment that she was experiencing was gone, and um, and there was some. Very, some very severe torment. I mean, just l like nothing I had ever experienced, things that I've read about um, and um, didn't know that Christians could experience that kind of torment. Mm. Um, but when we left, there was a new hope. And Angel stood up and gave a testimony um, declaring that against the advice of doctors, she was going to have more children if God saw fit. Um, and I declared that with her. And, um, but sleep didn't fully restore right away. And we'd go home and I would be up with Judah in the morning and she'd come downstairs and, um, and I could see that she hadn't slept. And so we had to um, spend our time in those early days. And even in the days that followed, um, really just praising God and declaring that he's good. And she was able to, to just start declaring that God is good no matter whether she sees um, the victory come in a wave or um, the overcoming, you know, kind of the symptoms be diminished over time. So there were times when, when she would get frustrated and I would get frustrated and we just knew that we needed to go back to the Word. Okay. So we took we took and we wrote out some of the scriptures that, um, that really touched our hearts while we were here, that, that God spoke to us through. Um, and you know, we decided to develop this stack of index cards on a three by five, you know, um, three by five spiral bound ring. And she would write them out. And then when she'd fill the binder, um, one particular day, she was you know, particularly discouraged. And I said, I tried to encourage her. I would try to stay out in front of her, and, um, and we were just stuck. And I said, all right, well, we're going to the coffee shop, and you're gonna sit down, and you're gonna take what's in this three-ring binder, and you're gonna put it in this new three-ring binder. <laughs> <laughs> and so we would just, we would just, um, just meditate on the Word, um, spend our time memorizing Scripture, and, um, and just um, renewing our minds that way. And so how long was it Coming out of the Four My Life retreat, would you say her sleep, how long did it take in that journey for her sleep to be fully restored? Do you remember? Hmm. Well, I'm sure my, she does. Yeah, <laughs> she, I'm sure she does too. My, my recollection is that it wasn't long at all. Mm -hmm. It was pretty quick. But you um, had to press in and, and you know, get in the Word and fight that battle ongoing and then came the victory. Yeah, we really did. We did. And it was, you know, I mean, it was, it was... I would say it was a, a several months before she was back to like, it, it was kind of like all of a sudden we, we realized one day like, wow, you know, we're, you know, I'm, we're sleeping. Um, Judah was still kind of getting us up and we always brought him into the bed with us and all that kind of stuff. But I, I think, um, you know, the, the, being able to be satisfied with a couple of hours was something that just came pretty quick. Um, or quickly, and um, because her disposition had changed, our attitude about who God was and who we were and how He was going to take care of us and see us through, mm -hmm. and our new roles um, as husband and wife and parents, um, that changed our perspective. Mm -hmm. So coming out of the healing of this, like you said, the doctors advised against having um, subsequent children, so how many children do you have now, Chris, against <laughs> doctor's advice? Against doctor's advice, we have four more children. Um, so that would be five total. And all good? Like all, no all good. postpartum? No postpartum. Depression, no, you psychosis, know, tinnitus? Nothing. Insomnia? No, no, nothing at all. How's your no. marriage, Chris? It's great. It's not perfect. We're always, we're always working to, uh, to improve. Is it your safe place? It is my safe is it place. Heaven on earth. It's heaven on earth. Yeah. So I have my own my own angel. You do. <laughs> so this is Chris Brown, 
And I wanted mm -hmm. to thank you for being vulnerable and sharing because a lot of people need to hear hope. Yeah. And not just hope that it's going to happen, you now have a testimony that it did happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so with this, this is an encouragement. If you have things that you need God to meet you with, and and like one thing that I heard angels say is, is coming to the For My Life retreat really helped you understand why this happened. Mm -hmm. And it gave you tools to come out of it. And it gave you tools for it not to happen again. That's right. And so this might be for you. And this is Adrian Shales for Be In Health talking about the For My Life retreat. Thanks for watching.